to the governor, he has been uh, a passionate and effective voice uh, for Puerto Rico. Uh, he has been present uh, in Washington uh, arguing the case, uh, and he has been so good to uh, welcome us and other members of the Senate and House who consider ourselves to be friends of the island uh, so that we can bring back firsthand accounts uh, of both the successes and the continued failures. Uh, we um, are so proud in Connecticut to have uh, the biggest uh, population uh, of any state with Puerto Rican roots, uh, about eight or nine percent uh, of uh, Connecticut residents um, have a, a historical connection to Puerto Rico. And uh, they sent us here. Uh, they demand that we take a leadership role in the Congress uh, to make sure that Puerto Rico is treated fairly in the wake of this disaster. Um, and uh, you, you couldn't help but be affected uh, last night uh, as we walked through um, uh, Canyon uh, Martin Pena uh, as the sun went down and the lights went out for the 104th day in that impoverished neighborhood, 104 days without light for children uh, to do their homework, 104 days without refrigeration for medicine, 104 days without electricity for oxygen tanks uh, for those who need it. Um, shouldn't happen anywhere in the world, and it absolutely shouldn't happen in the United States of America. And so we have three jobs as we go back to Congress. We will reconvene tonight uh, in session and start work uh, on a disaster supplemental uh, that uh, has to meet the needs of uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, that's our first job, uh, to make sure that there is a robust uh, disaster assistance package that gets Puerto Rico everything that they need. As we have done in the past, we made sure that Louisiana got everything they needed. Uh, when a major disaster hit there over 10 years ago. We need to make sure that Puerto Rico gets everything they need. We need to make sure that the dollars that are already in the U.S. Treasury get here now. 